has been around for like five years. It was me, a, an old, a different bass player, and a different drummer. And, um, and one thing, you know, like the drummer, the old bass player actually became a fireman, couldn't do it anymore, so we found Mike. And he was friends with our old drummer, Nate. Uh, then Nate. He left the band. We found Josh and Travis. He's been my friend since I was like 13. So I think it'd be cool if he if he got in the mix. Been playing like basically like the Woodstock, Nyack area, and we didn't really do so well like you know back then. Nothing too cool in our history. <laughs> Coheed and Cambria are like the two characters in the science fiction like three-part graphic novel that I'm working on called The Bag Online Adventures of Coheed and Cambria. Um, each record, like songs in the record, like loosely touch home on the story, but for the most part, like each record plays as a soundtrack to uh, the story. Like for example, the second stage Turbine Blade will be the second chapter in The Bag Online Adventures. Coheed and Cambria are like these two things that they, they're like guardians of these things called the key work and the key work are uh, these uh, these beams that bind all the planets together and unfortunately they split apart and then Coheed gets gets tricked into thinking that you know yo, you got to go meet Cambria you got to you know figure out what she's doing on this planet called Apollo and, and so he goes but he doesn't know he has a hidden agenda and inside his heart they've implanted this thing called like the Monstar and uh, what happens is, is is in order for it to uh, generate and spawn into this thing, like it has to be, it, it, a, a serum has to be injected, and that's where the dragonfly on the cover of uh, Second Stage Turbine Blade comes into play. This, the next chapter fo uh, following uh, the Second Stage Turbine Blade will be the upper armories of Third Deep, and that's where all the band members come into play. Like we, uh, we're actually the spawns of Coheed and Cambria, so we return to Heaven's Fence and we kick ass. <laughs> Three or four years ago, like, I would sing in, in, like, our kind of hometown Woodstock, and, like, kids would write in local zines, like, how they would love to bludgeon me to death in a chair, because they disliked the way the vocals were, and, um, it's a little discouraging, but, you know, I guess now it seems to be working, because, you know, kids are digging it, but I, I don't really know what to expect from, you know, kids, whether it's going to be positive or negative. Well, what'll usually happen in our writing process is like I'll like sit at home and I'll like write up like the guitar the the, the structure of the song from front to back and uh, bring it to the table with the rest of the fellows and they'll they'll put together their parts like the drums and the bass and we'll arrange it to a point where we think it's satisfying you know we'll we'll take like a whole day not even a whole day like a couple of hours to like write a new you know write a song and, and try to get it to work to the point where we can play it live. shows where there is no space and very limited and we don't want to hit kids in the face with guitars like but when we have the space to work with we really like to have fun and like try to jump around as much as we can I mean I guess it really all boils down to whether or not we're exhausted from the night before usually the music it, for us is pretty like energetic and we like to like express it in our emotions you know as well as the music I guess <laughs> I don't want people to think of us as like a technical prog rock band. It is cool. That's definitely what we are. Um, but I just want people to think of it as good music. You know, that's really about it. You know, for someone to go, oh yeah, you know, who's Coheed and Cambria? Oh, they're they're a good band. You should go check them out. That's what I want people to think.